Okay, so let's go through uh, this one here. So, um, got some sort of bracket. Looks like a little paddle, I guess. Um, and it is kind of connected and offset from a bulkhead. So it's welded on uh, to the bulkhead via these three posts. They're kind of connected uh, 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 equidistant around the centroid of the, uh, well, around the center of the, uh, what should we call it, uh, of, the, of, the, of the bracket. At the end, we got this force F. And then, uh, yeah, so the posts that are connecting it, they're uh, four inch tubes, four inches outer diameter, uh, three uh, with a uh, eighth of an inch uh, wall thickness. And uh, yeah, so um, welded on to the bulkhead via eighth of an inch fillet welds uh all the way around obviously uh and uh we're using an electrode that has an su of 80 ksa so uh with regards to fracture so this is a static problem uh if that if that force is applied uh, what is the maximum force that we can apply while still maintaining safety factor of 3.5? So a few things we need to we need to find out. So first off, the area, the effective area of the of the weld. Uh, so again, relatively simple. Uh, we basically just take the taking the formula for the effective area of a single weld. And multiply it by three. So three times one point four one five times pi times the height, the eighth of an inch times the radius, two inches. So and again, I got that from the table in Shigley's. Uh, oh, either either of the tables in Shigley's would have that. They both uh, they both repeat the area calculation. So that works out to three point three three inches squared so the what you might call it um the, this loading situation obviously uh so yeah we're, we're gonna have both torsion and bending going on here uh so the torsion of course would be kind of uh based upon this moment about the centroid here and the bending would be just based based upon this moment here. So we need to find the J uh, for that. So again, uh, what we're doing there is we're calculating the J. We're basically for each of the little each of the individual welds, we're calculating their J primes and the area times the radius squared, and then adding that up for all three. So the J prime for one of them again is that's just 2 pi uh, r to the third times 707h, or times t. 707h, we, we know the h value. We have, I haven't bothered to calculate what the t is. We can just use the h directly. So the j prime for each individual weld section is the uh, 4.44 inches to the fourth. The area for each each of those is 1.11 inches squared, and again, that's uh, you know I'd calculated the overall area up here, uh, so just not multiplying by three <laughs> to give us that, and then of course the radius from the centroid of the overall weld section, straight in the center here, to the centroid of each individual weld section. At six inches for each of them because uh, the circle about which these are applied is a 12 inch circle. So for each of those welds, you add that up. And so I just multiplied by three. Uh, and that'll give us 133.2 inches to the fourth for our J calculation. And then for I, 
it's not quite as simple as with the J because you know for the J we're basing the uh, the parallel axis theorem on the radius, uh, whereas for the I we're basing it upon the displacement in the y direction because uh, from from the centroid of course. So that's going to be different for the top for the post that's kind of on the top as opposed to those two posts that are that are at the bottom due to the fact they have different dense different vertical different vertical distances from the centroid or vertical displacements I suppose so again if we have a triangular arrangement oh, I zoom in. Come on. Come on. There you go. Sorry, Windows being finicky. Windows being very finicky, apparently. Okay, here we go. So if we have a trip. <sighs> Son of a. Anyhow, sorry. I guess I won't zoom in. So one so if we have a triangular if I have a triangular arrangement, then we know that basically uh, the center the centroid of kind of you know the 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 triangle is going to be located one third of the way up from the base or two thirds of the way from the uh, from the top. And we are given this distance here. So that's six inches there. We know what that is. So therefore, if that's two thirds of the, of the overall distance, then the total distance needs to be nine inches, which means that the distance from the centroid to the bottom two needs to be uh, three inches. So we got that. Uh, so basically, uh, again, we're just kind of adding up the I primes and then the uh, the area Y displacement squared terms. So we got this here. So again, we we knew what the J what the J was. Um, so we can just take that and divide by two to get our I. Uh, for the individual uh, circular one sections, and again we can do that because the uh, you know the circular weld section is itself symmetrical. Um, so uh, just take take that four that four over four point four four inches to the fourth, divide by two, then multiply by three, and then we've got the i y displacement terms. So the I, again, is the 1.11 inches squared for each of them. And then one of, here, one note cut off my skin. My skin got cut off a little bit there. There's supposed to be a square in there. Uh, so uh, yeah, and then, so we got one, one of those weld groups that's located six inches uh, vertically. Uh, so that'll be, and then we've got two of them that are located three inches. So. Add that all up, we get 66.6 uh, inches to the fourth for our I term. So as for the stresses that these cause, so we've got the direct load. Again, the way that you have a direct load distributed is uh, evenly distributed across the entire world section. That's the assumption. It may not necessarily be the best assumption out there, but it's a good enough for uh, it's a good enough assumption for uh, simplifying things a fair bit. So uh, our our tau prime is equal to f over a e f over three point three three inches to the third sorry inches uh, squared that gives us 0.3 per inch squared f. Again, that's all downwards, all in the y direction. Next, we got the torsion. So the torsion, that again, 
you know, we're, we're, applying a, we're applying a bending moment, and that's going to cause stress that is oriented in a direction that's basically perpendicular to the vector from the center of the weld group to where we're, uh, to, to the point we're looking at. So, you know, if we're, if, we're at, if we're looking at this point here, the stress will be oriented in this direction. If we're looking at this point here, stress is oriented in that direction. If we're looking at this point here, stress is oriented in that direction. So we're not worried at all about this one here because that's that's always going to be at least partially canceling out the direct load. So that one is always going to have less of a um, less, less stress than B will. The, the, the one the one I labeled as B here. So, uh, and, and again, that I can say that because it is located the same vertical distance as B from the centroid, so its bending stress is also the same. So there's, no, there's nothing that could be going on that would increase its stress level higher than what we see is, uh, going on in B. So the two points that we might be worried about are A and B. So what we want to do is we want to be kind of breaking up the stress that occurs into... So if we go and look at what's going on at uh, location A, which again is, you know, the one that kind of at the top there, uh, it's just vertically above the centroid of the weld. So it's x minus x bar is zero. So it's uh, the, y, the y component of its... Uh, you know, of the stresses that's going to be caused is going to be a zero. So we're looking at X only there. So the torsional moment that we have, that's a negative 15 inches F. Again, that's because that's a clockwise moment that we're applying. And it's 15 inches offset. So plugging that in, negative 15 inches F times uh, so the 8 inch value there, um, uh, which is, again, just based upon the fact that we're looking at the top of, this, of, of, the, uh, of the weld section there. So we've got 6 inches from here to here, and then we have an additional 2 inches there. So we're looking at that 8 inches. Uh, the formula, again, for x, that's, uh, it's actually y bar minus y. So the y value, so we, we plug in the y value and then uh, subtract it. So that, that, that cancels out from the negative from the moment. So again, if we're applying, applying that clockwise, you know, applying that clockwise torque at the top, it's going to be pushing that way, which is what we expect. Clear this up a little bit. What just happened there? No, oh, there we go. So, uh, yeah, those uh, then it's the negatives cancel out, and we're left with uh, oh yeah, and divide by our j. So we're left with 0.9 f, uh, 0.9 per inch squared f, as our stress uh, caused at that location. Uh, the other location that we might be worried about is over here, down here, because that's the location where basically the y portion of the stresses induced are going to combine with the y portion of the direct load. So uh, the location, the you know the x and y coordinates of that location, we've got the we know what the size of this hypotenuse here is. Uh, it's eight inches, uh, and we know that you know these. This angle here, one third of a circle is 120. So obviously, subtract the 90 for that, and we are left with 30 degrees below the x uh, axis parallel. So uh, our x coordinate, so our x coordinate is going to be eight inches times uh, the cosine of 30 degrees. So that's uh, 6.93 inches, and then the y uh, coordinate is going to be negative 8 inches times the sine of 30 degrees, or negative 4 inches. 
So we plug those into our values, uh, in, into our formulas. So again, the dx one, same formula that we that we had uh, the last time. We've got the negative 15f minus the y value. Of course, the y value in this case is, is negative as well. So these two negatives cancel out, but this one doesn't. So we're still left with a with a negative uh, component of the uh, uh, yeah, still look for the negative value for the stresses that are induced in the x direction. Not, not that the x one really matters too much in this situation because again, that's the only stress being induced in the x-axis, so it'll uh, it, it doesn't combine with anything. But anyway, so yeah, it's the fourteen, the fifteen inch f times the times the four inch divided by three, uh, one thirty three point two inches to the fourth. That gives us negative point. Four five per inch squared f, and then we've got the uh, y value. Uh, so this is the one that would that would combine with the uh, direct shear. So uh, do, do, do. we've got what do we have here? We have the uh, negative fifteen inches f times the X location, uh, the 6.8, uh, 6.93 uh, inches divided by 133.2 inches to the fourth, and it gives us negative one point, sorry, negative 0 0.78 inches to the fourth. Next up, last thing we've got is the uh, tau triple prime or bending stress. So again, that's all in the Z. That's all going to be. That's all acting uh, in a direction that is perpendicular to the axis of the well. So that having been said, we are worried about what is going on for the top one, because uh, essentially, you know, if you if you weld this thing on and you try, you know, and you try apply this bending moment here, what's going to happen is you're going to want to pull that top one away. Whereas these two are going to be pressed in. That having been said, what's what's going to happen when these two press in? Is the weld carrying that? Not really. What's going to happen there is that the pipe itself is going to press against the uh, thing that it's welded to, or the bulkhead, I guess I think I think I said it was. It's it's going to press against the bulkhead itself, and the you know the bulkhead's going to be in the way and it's going to press back. So the weld itself doesn't need to carry that load. Sure, some of that load's going to get there, but you know it's it's not going to be much. So we are worried here about the stresses that are induced up here because down here the forces that are resisting that uh, are basically resisting that tendency to push in. Those are going to be carried largely by the component itself and not the weld. So at that location up here, we've got our tau triple prime is equal to the m times the c divided by the a. So the m, of course, is the f times the distance, basically the length of the, uh, the length of the legs. So I said that was uh, 30 inches. And then obviously there. So we got that. Uh, we also have the uh, C value there. So again, the C value is just that eight inches. Uh, same, same idea as what we saw with the uh, torsional. We're worried about the point of the weld that is the furthest from the neutral axis. So we need to include that extra two inches of the radius of the weld itself. And then our I, uh, yeah, we calculated that. So we can figure out that the stress, uh, the stress due to the bending, the tau triple prime is 30 inches F times eight inches divided by the 66.6 .6 inches to the fourth. 
that gives us 3.6 per inch squared f. So from there, we can say the critical location is at a, you know, we're, what we saw down up here, you know, with, with you know, the fact that we're going to get a little bit of combination of the vertical components of the stress is located at uh, um, B doesn't really matter because it's very small compared to the bending stress. So we're worried about what's going on at A because it's got, you know, it's it's carrying the bending stress. Um, e even if the welds below uh, were carrying the load, you know, like say maybe, maybe, maybe these things were inserted into a hole. There's a hole in the bulkhead and they were inserted in then welded. Uh, then, okay, then the welds would be carrying the load. That having been said, the stresses induced would be half of what we saw here because, uh, uh, well, again, not, not, not exactly half. The stresses that we induce to be less than what we see here because the distance from the neutral axis to the bottom of the bottom welds, that's just going to be the three inches plus the two inches. So that's going to be five inches versus eight inches. So we're still seeing far less of the bending stress, which is a lot larger than the stresses uh, imposed by all the other stuff. So we can, what we can do is we can find out the total stress by basically combining the stresses acting at that location A. So again, that's 3.6 per inch squared F, and uh, that's, it. that's the bending stress, so it's the z-axis. We've, uh, we've got the torsional stress, that is 0.9 per inch squared F, and again, that's in the y direction. And then we also have the direct load portion. That's the 0.3 per inch squared f. So we need, you know, we just need to take Pythagoras' theorem and combine all those things together. So they're all acting perpendicular to one another. So we just, you know, throw, we just throw them into Pythagoras' theorem. So I went ahead and just factored out the, uh, the f per inch squared. So we're given, uh, so our tau is equal to uh, 0.3 squared plus 0.9 squared plus 0.3 plus 3.6 squared. Take the square root of that, and that's per inch f. So that gives us 3.7. So a very slight increase from just accounting for the bending stress. So if we want to find our safety factor, again, our factor of safety here that we're targeting is 3.5. So we calculate that by taking the ultimate strength of the weld rod in shear and dividing it by the shear caused by the maximum stress, the shear, the shear, the shear caused by, by the stress at that critical point. So again, with, with steels, the ultimate strength in shear is equal to 0.8 of the ultimate strength in the tensile test. So we were told at the beginning that the ultimate strength of the weld material is 80 KSI. So 0.8 of that, or 80% of that, is 64 KSI. So that's, the that's our SUS. So the, and then just rearranging this a little bit, uh, 64 KSI divided by 3.5 is equal to our 3.7 per inch squared F max. Solving for F max, we're able to find that it is equal to 4.9 kips. So that, that, that is how you go ahead and combine uh, the uh, you know, the, the various stresses caused by torsion, bending, and, and uh, the direct load as well. Um, other stuff, uh, obviously, you know, if, if I want to make, if we were making this a fatigue problem, then uh, you would end up uh, kind of ref taking your F max, so taking, taking your, your, no, let's see here, Take, taking your shear stress count, your, your stress calculation, 3.7 per inch squared F, 
and then just figuring out if your load varies from some amount to another amount, what is the average, what is the mean of that, of that variation, and what is the amplitude? So say, for example, your load varied from 100 pounds to 400 pounds, back and forth from there, then your average there is equal to 250, and then your amplitude is going to be equal to uh, 150. Relatively simple calculation. Anyhow, uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's basically how you go about that. Uh, everything else, you know, is just in variations on the themes we've talked about. So different geometries are going to re result in different combinations of I, J, and, K, and uh, A area, but uh, that's uh, you know still relatively straightforward. All right, uh, see you guys.